progress. How do we measure progress? Do we measure it by industrial output? By infrastructure? Do we measure it by personal wealth? Or is it measured in the things that we buy? Or financial formulas like gross domestic product, per capita income, fiscal surpluses, or trade balances? But what if there was a place where none of these things, where none of these things really mattered? Where there didn't need be two cars in every garage? Where there wasn't a wide plasma screen TV in every room? Where the infrastructure was adequate and improving? A place where food was natural and water was plentiful and drinkable right from the tap? Where four seasons existed and the temperature in winter barely left frost on the ground and the temperature at the beach in the summer rarely surpassed 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Where prevailing winds cleaned the air, eliminating all pollution, and rivers provided adequate electricity for nationwide broadband internet service and industrial power. Where a wide variety of food and fruit were produced locally and delivered fresh to local stores and corner street vendors. Food, real food, Tomatoes that tasted like tomatoes, lemons that stung like bees, and meat from Hereford cattle that could be cut with a fork and served with buttered baked potatoes, sour cream, and fresh chives. A place where every city block boasted its own fruit stand, bakery, laundry service, and eatery, and people actually said hello when passing on the street. This place does actually exist. Da, da, da. And it's called Uruguay. It's located on the Atlantic coast of South America, tucked between Argentina to the south and Brazil to the north. Uruguay is not a big country. It's about as big as Washington state in the U.S. and proudly boasts a population of only 3.3 million people about the same as Berlin, Germany, and uncannily resembles the shape of Utopia as mapped by Sir Thomas Moore in 1895. Although a small country, Uruguay has one of the lowest population densities in the world with only 19 people per square kilometer. In this regard, Uruguay is a country with one of the lowest carbon emissions per capita in the world and over 180 kilometers of beaches. Approximately 40% of Uruguay's population, or about 1.3 million people, live in the capital city of Montevideo, and the rest live in small cities and towns throughout the country. Excluding Uruguay's top two cities, Montevideo and Salto, the average size of a Uruguayan city would be about 30,000 people. There's nothing really special about Uruguay. It doesn't have the big mountain ranges like Chile, Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia. And although on the Atlantic Ocean, Uruguay doesn't have any big waves for surfing like Hawaii's Waimea or Peru's Pico Alto. It doesn't have any big movie stars like Mexico's Cantinflas or Hollywood's Latin lovers, Anthony Quinn or Rudolph Valentino. Its neighbor to the north, Brazil, has a land mass and economy almost 50 times that of Uruguay while Argentina, its neighbor to the south, plays the role of big brother, sharing a language, European bloodlines, and the romantic folklore of the gaucho. On the contrary, Uruguay is the smallest Hispanic country in South America. It doesn't have the big bucks to purchase the soccer aces like Ronaldinho from Brazil, or the Englishman David Beckham. Although, in 1950, Uruguay did stun the world by a come-from-behind victory defeating Brazil in the finals of the World Cup, an event remembered to this day as the Maracanazo, a feat still talked about by the elderly, mate-sipping fans that were there. In 
No, Uruguay is nothing really special, nothing fancy, just a quiet little country that's unaffected and natural. A country with well-aligned priorities which are firmly based on family, community, and quality of life. A country that in 2008 had the second highest literacy rate in Latin America after Cuba, a life expectancy of almost 80 years, and considered by the United Nations as the ninth greenest and most livable country in the world behind the likes of Sweden and Austria. According to Transparency International, Uruguay was ranked number one, tied with Chile, with the least corruption in Latin America in 2008. In the same year, Uruguay was ranked number one of the South American countries in freedom of the press by the French organization Reporters Without Borders, and by The Economist as having a quality of life reminiscent of that found in Europe. Uruguay is an agriculturally based country with beef cattle generating over a billion dollars a year in exports, principally to Europe. While Uruguay has only a $10,800 per capita income based on a $37 billion gross domestic product, it has the highest cattle per capita in the world with over 12 million head of principally Hereford stock. That means there's 3.8 cows for every Uruguayan citizen. In addition, Uruguay reports almost 11 million head of sheep in 2008 and is the fifth largest exporter of apparel wool after Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, and South Africa, respectively. So who are these Uruguayans? According to their 2006 census, the overwhelming majority of Uruguay's population, or 95%, is of predominantly European origin. People of Spanish and Italian ancestry are the most numerous, followed by those from France, Germany, Portugal, England, Switzerland, and Russia, with the balance of the population being a mixture of black Uruguayan, indigenous, and Asian descent. For example, the city of Colonia, now a UNESCO heritage site which boasts daily ferry service to Buenos Aires, Argentina, was settled by the Portuguese in 1680 and later developed by Swiss, German, and Austrian immigrants in the early 1800s. While the British that built the Uruguayan railroad system settled cities like Chamberlain, Barker, and Young, and the Russians that brought the sunflower seed to Uruguay settled the town of San Javier in the department of Rio Negro. The European immigration to Uruguay has heavily influenced the country's architecture, agricultural techniques, art, and culture. As a consequence, some call Uruguay the Switzerland of South America for both its banking system and pluralistic acceptance of industrious foreigners. Okay, so Uruguay is civilized, green, most livable, and enjoys a wonderfully temperate climate in the Southern Hemisphere. That's all nice, but what can you actually do in Uruguay? Well, if you like the outdoors, maybe you'd like some horseback riding. Available every spring in the cattle country of Tacaurembó in the center of Uruguay. Perhaps you might like team sports available in every small town, like soccer, rugby, or polo. Or maybe you prefer individual sports, like sailing, golf, or rowing, or just being alone with nature. Perhaps you just want to relax and enjoy a night on the town. Well, here you can enjoy one of Uruguay's casinos, restaurants, or enjoy opera at the Teatro Solis, or a musical production presented every summer in the National Stadium. Oh, and if you want to know a secret, the dance of the tango, made famous by Argentine immigrants of Buenos Aires, was actually derived from the Cuban milango and habanera music in Montevideo in the year 1890. And Carlos Cardell, 
The legendary Argentine king of tango in the 1930s was actually born in Tacaurembó, Uruguay, according to the passport found at the site of the fateful plane crash that took his life at the ripe age of 45. A controversy that still rages between Uruguay and Argentina to this very day. But putting petty rivalries aside, Uruguay quietly enjoys the comforts of a community in harmony, a lifestyle that stresses literature, reading, and a poignant debate over a cup of coffee or cortado at any one of Montevideo's legendary boliches. Besides politics, to be a true Uruguayan, it is imperative that you become a soccer fan and swear loyalty to either Club Nacional or Club Peñarol. In any case, in Uruguay, you are accepted for who you are rather than what car you drive. Uruguay boasts a progressive democracy, outstanding and affordable health care, both private and public, and a cost of living that's less than half of any European capital. In this regard, to become a citizen of Uruguay, besides a passport, certificate of good conduct and health, birth and marriage certificates, you need to prove that you can generate a minimum monthly income of $650. On a more practical basis, a retired couple living in Montevideo with a river or ocean view apartment can enjoy a very comfortable lifestyle on between $1,500 and $2,000 per month. So there you have it, Uruguay. Nothing fancy, no earth-shattering headlines, no topographic wonders, no strategic raw materials, nor wars, nor conflicts. Just centuries of history, some rivers, and a people where basic courtesy and respect abound. A place where the day begins with a little sunshine, the clippity-clop hoofbeats of the horse-driven garbage collector, and the resounding call of the corner fruit vendor as he sings the prices of his daily wares. A place that makes no claim to greatness, record-breaking economic formulas, or astounding accomplishments. No, nothing like that. Uruguay boasts only the self-confidence to be just Uruguay.